Oh, I'm sorry. Vice president of EXP. Give it up for Russ Lagan. Come on up, Russ. My badge has me with no hair. If you guys want to see what I looked like three weeks ago, sorry, three months ago, there it is, right? Is that a transformation? How many of you guys would like to know how I did that? Yeah, I had a bald guy walk up to me the other day and he's like, how the heck did you do that? Three months ago, that was you. And I was like, I don't know, man. I just like water it every day and it grows. <laughs> he's like, so you're a Chia pet. And I'm like, yes, basically I'm a Chia pet. All right, so let's, let's dig in here, guys. I've got a lot of stuff to do for you guys. I've got a lot of things to show you guys. And, and here's the thing. Well, did I go forward, backwards? Let me go backwards here. There you go. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. So let me, let me ask you guys, do you remember when you were young? For some of you, I know it's a while ago. The good news is the older you get, the harder it is to remember anything, okay? So when you were young and it was the middle of the night and you heard this bump and you didn't know what it was, but you woke up and you're laying in your bed and you're terrified. You don't know what it was, but you're terrified. And the longer you lay there, the more scared you got. And then something pops into your head. Maybe there's a monster under my bed. Maybe there's a monster in my closet. How many of you guys had that experience? I'm sorry, hold on a second. You guys are real estate agents. How many of you had that experience last night? Okay. So what I want you to know and I want you to hear and I want you to see is that guys, everybody has these moments of fear. And while you guys have an amazing support system and you've got amazing leaders and you've got amazing people around you and the coaches have coaches, have coaches, have coaches here but there's still some underlying fear in this industry. And one of the things that I know that alleviates fear is that when you have your eyes fully open and you finally got to that moment where you had the bravery to step out of that bed, your foot heat hits the floor and you bolt to the room across the room, you flip the light on. And it takes you another three seconds to actually take a peek under the bed. And once you took a look under the bed, you knew it wasn't a monster under the bed. So what I want to do for you guys today is I want to show you, number one, how to flip on the light. Number two, I want to show you there really isn't a monster under the bed. And that comes from knowing what's going on in the market and knowing what the stats are. How many of you guys have been in business since like 2002, 3, 4, 5? A couple of you, right? How many of you are less than 10 years in the business? Yeah, wow. Okay, so guys, I want to show you some stuff so you understand where we are, what we're doing, where we're going, and how we're going there so you can take your business to the next level. You can act with authority. Once you know there's not a monster under the bed, are you afraid anymore? No. no. Right? So I'm going to show you how to make sure you know that there's no monster under the bed. So let's take this on here. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. You've got to take that step, step out of the bed. And stepping out of the bed with knowledge that you're going the right direction is key. So let's dive into some statistics. How long does it take for the average American to move historically? 6.1 years for a bunch of years. It's right around six or seven. Guys, do you see what's going on right now? Did I just flip the light on for some of you guys? 9.3. Now keep in mind, this is 2022. 2023, that number went up a little bit more. It's in a 9.5, 9.6 range right now. So what that means is the average person in the U.S. is moving a lot slower. So that means there's a lot of things that happen when you go from six years average move time to almost 10 years average move time. I want you guys to understand that there are some people that are in this room and some people that are around your spheres that are saying, I'm just going to wait this out. We're going to be fine. This is going to be fine, right? It's going to come back around. And while I believe that we can be successful in this market and you can be successful in any market, what I also know is that you have to have a plan long term. You have to have a plan to be able to take your business to the next level. And you need to know that the average American moving every six years is a very different game than every 10. So you've got to start thinking and planning and being long term and going long term. I've got a couple of recipes at the end that will help you guys stay in communication, stay in contact and actually leverage that statistic so that you guys are the ones that come out ahead. Does that sound fair? I'll show that to you guys in a couple minutes. Okay, so where did this come from? What's been going on? Check this out, guys. Average annual units completed going back in 1970, 
And then we come up to when I started in the real estate business, 2005, got into the business in 2005, moved to Tampa, Florida, got to learn how to build a business knowing zero people in a market getting destroyed, right? My wife's cousin came into town and he's, he's a real estate guy in Tampa. And he's like, Ross, man, a complete idiot can make a hundred grand in Tampa right now as a real estate agent. You should move down to Tampa. And I'm like, I'm the biggest idiot I know. Let's do this. Okay. So I moved to Tampa and of course, in the real estate market crashes. And then we've got housing units completed went way off the, off the map, right? So the builders stopped building because they're like, I'm not gonna build houses. I've got so many supplies. We had neighborhoods in Tampa that the whole neighborhood had two residents and 400 houses, right? So this drop in the no, number of houses being built really made a big difference in the way the market was. So what happens in 2010, 11, 12? Well, once people got past being chicken, they started buying up houses, right? They bought up houses and they bought up houses and they bought up houses. So what happens to the industry then, okay? Uh, You've got 2.1 million households being added in 2023, and you've got 800,000 homes being built, which means last year alone, we had 1.5 million less houses than we needed for the household growth just last year. So what does that do to a real estate market when those types of things are happening? So people are like, well, oh, Russ, inventory is going to skyrocket. No, it's not. Russ, this is going to happen. No, it's not. And here's why, right? So here's a fun one. If you can get these five people to agree on anything, you know something's going on, right? Realtor.com says we're looking at a 5.2 million home shortage. Bank of America saying 4 million. Freddie Mac, three. Morgan Stanley, John Burns, Moody Analytics. Those guys always have to be conservative because if they're wrong, it makes them look bad. So who in this group really knows what's going on in the market? Probably most likely. It's probably the Realtor.com, right? So how many of you guys know how many homes are normal year and sold, sold in a normal year? 5.5 to 6 million home sales a year is pretty normal, right? Do you know how many home sales we had last year? Just north of four. 3.94, four, a little over four. That's the numbers you'll see. There's always argument and debate over that. So what that means is we have less home sales. So what we're seeing is we see low supplies, we see high demand, drives up prices, then interest rates go up, People get a little bit freaked out and then they realize, hey, I still got to buy a house. They come back into the market, a little bit of homes come into the market and they snatch those up. So when we're looking at across the nation, we're seeing house sales get picked up left and right. Now, are there some markets that are seeing a little bit of downturn? Sure. There's some pro uh, properties and uh, areas in Washington. Of course, California is always doing this. They're like, they go up, they fall, they go up, they fall, they go up, they fall. It's just the way California does it, right? That's no different than normal for them. But when we're looking at these types of house shortage, what happens when you have less houses than you need? Prices keep still moving up, right? So it's important that you understand that when we're looking at what happened even just last year, last year, the housing number actually got worse than what the supply was. So what's going to happen to housing supplies over the next year or two? They're going to stay low. So Mike, Michael Hellickson was talking about investing in houses. And some of you guys are like, I don't know if I want to invest in a house right now. If you know that we've got a massive shortage of homes, we've got a whole year's worth of homes missing at 5 million sales, if we got 5 million more sales, we break even with what we're behind. We've got, this is what we call pent up demand. So when you've got pent up demand, what happens to demand? Stays high. What happens to prices? They still go up. Are they going up as much as they were? No, but they're still going up. So let's talk about the rest of the story. So here's the active listing count. You'll notice this goes back to January of 17. And if you go back 16, 15, 14, 13, 11, 12, that number keeps going up. That red line, just picture that red line just going that way. This is just since 2017. So we're looking at inventory levels at all time lows. Now, did we see a little bump up in 2022? Sure. And everybody's like, the sky is falling. Oh my God, we're going to die. Did we die? Anybody in this room die? So let's sort the facts versus fear. So we hear a lot of stuff in the market, and this is something that I want to challenge you with. And this is something that I do with our brokers a lot. We've got to tell the story of what's actually going on. Guys, by the way, you know, there's some nar nonsense going on. Have you heard about that a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Half the reason we have the problem we have is because the industry knows what we know, but everybody outside the industry doesn't know what we know, which is an unfair advantage. And it's amazing. But we've got to do a better job of telling our story. And a couple of recipes I'll show you later are about you guys telling that story. Okay, so let's se separate some of the facts from the fear. So let's go into some facts. Okay, I love these guys. 2012, you guys remember this? We've got shadow inventory coming to get you. <laughs> 2023, higher mortgage rates. No kidding. 2014, QE ending in October. Nobody even knows what that means. 2015, manufacturing. There's going to be a manufacturing recession. 
It's going to collapse the world. It's going to kill the home prices. 2016, home prices just got back to bubble high. That's when they started their new mantra. Everything's bubble, 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 bubble. I need to get one of those looping things where I can make mm-hmm. that a loop. You know, bubble, bubble, bubble. And I can just wrap over the top of that. I'm going to get one of those. 2017, be afraid. Why? No good reason, but be afraid. 2019, home pros, price growth was cooling off. <laughs> no, it wasn't. 2020, COVID-19, anybody remember that? 2021 mortgage forbearance. <gasps> oh my gosh. When these mortgage forbearance, when they let the gates loose, it's going to be a flood and the whole world's going to end. You're going to need to build an arc. 2022, 7% mortgage rates, historically low housing. So here's facts guys. In October of 2015, housing today said bubble larger than 2006. Wrong. 2016, we're in a new housing bubble. Wrong. Remember the mantra? Bubble, 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 bubble. Years of bubble. Ugh. 2017, home ownership doesn't build wealth study finds. Let me repeat that. Home ownership doesn't build wealth study finds. Hmm. This is Colorado, so somebody had too much. 2018, it's better to rent and buy in today than buy in today's housing market. Does that sound like sound advice? Now, okay, 2019, I love this. Next year will be hard on the housing market, especially in these big cities. House prices went up 16%. 2021, love this. Housing boom is over as new home sales fall to pandemic low. House prices went up 18%. Guys, these are the headlines, and these are the things that your customers and your consumers and the people around you and your family and the people you love, they're hearing this stuff. So when you sit in a listing appointment, they're like, well, I heard a bubble's coming. Since 2015, they've been doing what? Bubble, 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 right? And they're still doing it, okay? There's facts, guys. So what I'll do is I'll just rent. Oh, there's a brilliant plan, okay? So here's what's happened with rent. Last 21, 22, Q, 9.8% up, 6.5% up. Any of you guys want to buy houses and have them as rentals? Do you feel a certain level of security knowing that rental prices continue to go up? And who does that money go to? The people that own the houses, right? So be the people that own the houses and take advantage of some of this stuff, right? Providing housing is a noble thing, okay? Be fair, be a good landlord, take good care of people and charge a fair price. That's the way it's supposed to be. So here's the thing. I love this. A couple of years ago, foreclosures are coming. They're coming in droves. They're coming in waves. You guys ever watch uh, Lord of the Rings and you got the, I don't know, those crazy dudes with the crazy faces. I'm not that big of a fan. They got an army of weird looking things coming at them, right? And everybody was talking about that, like foreclosures are coming. Let's be clear. There are some things out there in the market that look like foreclosure, but it's institutional buyer, uh, institutional buyers that bought a bunch of stuff up. And what they're doing is they're unloading some of their non-performing assets. So are there some non-performing assets that are coming out of the market? Yeah, but guys, I don't know. Look at that little black bot in the bottom and a little red bump up. Did it come up a little bit? Yeah. Are we anywhere near normal? Nope. Do you know why? Let me show you why. Americans are sitting on a tremendous amount of equity. So Americans right now, look at this. 30% of people out there have homes with 50% more, e- more or more equity. Easy for me to say. Or more equity. Do people typically foreclose when they have 50% equity or more? Well, does it happen? Yes. Is it normal? No. Because all you got to do is sell the stupid house and it doesn't go into foreclosure. So here's me. Let's make it better. I love green. I'm glad they put this in green. Uh, 38.7% of people own their house free and clear. So 68.7% of this market right now has either 50% equity in their house or they own it outright. Does that mean people have choices? Yeah. So who's educating them on this? So is now a good time to move? Is now a good time to sell your house? I don't know. Let's sit down and talk about it. Let's talk about the whole plan. Right? So when you start sitting down and looking at that, you've got 68.7% of people that have the ability to actually have choices and do things that they want to do. So when we're talking about interest rates and costs of housing and so forth, these people have options, guys. So let's talk through some of those options so you understand what the opportunities are here. Okay? Here's another one. Average loan to value of homes. 42% 42% in 2022, and actually less than that now. Loan to value, average home, means that people have equity in their home. People that have equity in their home have choices. So let's talk about what the rest of the story is. Have you guys heard that uh, credit card debt is creeping up at all-time highs? Yeah, so while people have equity, is the cost of everything gone up? 
yeah, gas has gone up a little bit. Stuff has gone up a little bit. Insurance has gone up a little bit. Food has gone up a little bit. My wife said to me the other day, she's like, we spent $900 on food last month. I'm like, how much did the dogs eat? So it's just my wife and I, two greyhounds, and I blame the dogs for eating too much. Okay. And if you've seen greyhounds, they don't look like they ate too much ever. So credit card debt is at all time highs, but look at the interest rates on credit cards. Look at the interest rate on auto loans. Auto loan debt is at all time highs. Student loans are still out there floating around. Good news is there's going to be another threat of a giveaway this year uh, so we can get more voters. Not being political, it's just true. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. I don't know if I opened a can of worms with that, dude. 12%, so 12% personal loans. So when we look at the average debt that the Americans have, when you add up the cars and the credit cards and the rest of the stuff, these guys have a massive amount of debt. So here's a fun one. When we're looking at housing as real estate agents, we can't just look at housing and houses. We've got to start looking at blended rates, right? So if somebody says, sits down with you and they're like, well, Jeff, rant, man, like I've got a 3% interest rate on my, my house. I'm like, yeah, do you have credit card debt? Yeah, do you have car debt? Yeah, do you have student loan debt? Yeah. Do you have any other personal debt? Yeah. Okay, well, what if we paid all that debt off and at the end of the year, at the end of the month, and you go buy the different house at the end of the month, your net dollars out of pocket every month is the same. Do you really care what your interest rate is when your net dollars out of pocket every month is the same? Or similar. So uh, Madison Hel Hellickson, are you in the room? I think she's, she's out. She's out, she's out she's working. Booth. Yeah. So guys, I ran this past her. I'm like, do you talk to people like this? And she's like, yeah. So guys, you need a mortgage person that's on your side. That's not just talking about the house and talking about the interest rate. You need somebody on your side that's able to say, let's look at the whole picture and let's talk through the whole picture. And if we could pay off the credit cards, pay off the houses, pay off the personal debt, pay off the student loans, and your house payment goes up 800 bucks a month, but your personal debt payments goes down 2000 right? I just saved you two grand a month on interest. Are you okay with $800 more house payment? Yeah. So guys, we got to start thinking as a real estate industry and talking through stuff. So the biggest objection I hear consistently is, well, Russ, they don't want to move because of the interest rate. And part of the reason we're sitting at 10, 10 years versus six is we got people sitting there and we're not doing a good job educating them. And if we don't do a good job educating them, they're going to still sit there when in fact it might be the right time for them to make the move. Good. Makes sense. This is a game changer, life changer when you understand this stuff and you're able to communicate this stuff. When you're able to sit down with a buyer and say, yeah, okay, so you're gonna stay renting instead of buying. Okay, so let's talk about $300,000 house. If your $300,000 house goes down 15 grand in the next year, that's a problem? I'm like, yeah. How much are you paying for rent? Two grand a month. So you're throwing away 24,000 and that's fine, but you're worried about 15, that might happen. Do you see how you can speak with a sense of authority? I can move through the room with a sense of authority as soon as I turn the light on. Guys, in the real estate industry, unfortunately, not a lot of people are teaching us how to flip the lights on and move through the room with, with a sense of authority. Let's do this. I'm going to blindfold you right now. We're going to turn all the lights off and I'm going to have you race to the other side. How fast are you going to go? Not super. Yeah, because we have, this, we have this end table finder that we keep on the outside of our foot, the little one right? And it finds every end table and every sharp object as you're going through there. But as soon as I flip the lights on, boom, now you can, you can move. I almost said haul donkey. See, there's a thousand dollar fee for swearing. So I said haul donkey, ha <laughs> ha, saved a thousand bucks. Okay. So guys, I want you guys to start seeing this as this is flipping on a light so you can move through the room with authority. So knowing this information, when I'm communicating with a seller, communicating with a buyer gives me the ability to say, is now a good time to buy a house? Heck yeah, it is. Okay. So let's talk about uh, recipe here, guys. I want to give you good value. You got 10 minutes left. So I'm going to give you some good stuff. Have you guys ever seen a plan that's so complicated? It's got to work. No. Okay. So simplest plan in the world. So here's my recipe that I built after a bunch of years. And by the way, every once in a while, somebody uh, goes like, did you even sell houses, Russ? Sold 143 houses in one year with one full-time, one part-time person. So the answer is yes. Okay. And this is what I learned from that. The more people you have, the more houses you can sell equals more money, equals more people that you could sell more houses with. Wait a sec, hold on, let me go through this again. I know some of you guys are stymied right now. The more people I know, the more houses I can sell, the more houses I sell, the more money I make, the more money I make, the more people I do a good job with, they refer me back more people that sell more houses. This is a sphere of influence business. The more business I do, the more business I do. So this is really the recipe for unlimited closings. See, guys, there's a bunch of people are talking about a bunch of different things in this market. But one thing I know for a fact is AI is going to change the business. Technology is going to change the business. NAR is going to change the business. There's a lot of things that are going to change the business. 
Well, what I do know for a fact is that relationships are going to be the thing that insulates you from a lot of that. And I know it's hard to say because it takes more time, it takes more energy, it takes more effort, but relationships are the key to building more business right now. So let me give you guys a couple of numbers here. 25%. Typical closing ratio on leads generated online is in the first 30, 60, 90 days is about 25%, which means you got to go through 400 leads or so plus or minus to get one closing. Does anybody feel like when they're working with leads and developing leads and building leads, they feel like they're banging their head against the wall? That's why. Okay. You guys, now listen, this is my opinion. This are my, my statements based on the things I've seen and done and people I've tracked and coaching we've done and tracked people. Some of you guys can do better numbers than that. Great. Good for you. But the average real estate agent, that's their experience. So it makes it really frustrating for the average person. Okay. So here's a fun part. Uh, NAR did a study. One of the things they're good at, and I love is NAR does studies. Okay. And they found that the average real estate agent does point between 0.8 and 1.2% closing on leads generated online when they work them over 12 months. Okay. So that's 0.8 to 1.2. So let's just say, I'm going to say plus or minus right around one. Now here's the rub guys. The people that are tracking it, those are not the norm. Those are the people who are actually tracking it and they have CRMs and they have ISAs and they have stuff. Right? Are there people that get higher numbers and higher conversion rates? Yes. But when we call the people that track this, which would be not your average agent, right? The people that are tracking this are going to be a slightly above average. NAR is saying that they're typically running around 1%. Now, I'm not saying don't do that. But what I am saying is that there's a missed opportunity and we got to go back to the basics. I interviewed a guy named John Cheplak. You guys ever heard of him? Uh, about two weeks ago. And the thing he said is every single person I'm dealing with right now, whether they're doing 1 million or they're doing 100 million, I'm telling them they got to go back to the basics. Got to go back to the basics. So what I'm going to encourage you guys to do today is go back to the basics. Here's the reason why. When you're looking at sphere of influence, sphere of influence business closes at about 10%, plus or minus, when you work it long term. Okay, so let's say you half donkey this. That's 5%. Let's say you quarter donkey this. That's 2.5%. So for the average person out there in the market, I know some of you coaches can be encouraging people to make sure you go back to this and building that and building the relationships because you've got to make sure you're getting the highest and best use of your time and the best conversion. Sphere of influence is still the best conversion. So when you look at the recipe, the more people I have, the more houses I can sell, the more houses I can sell, the more money I can make, the more money I can make, the more people I get, which can help me sell more houses. Does it take more time? Yes. Does it take an investment in you? Yeah. Does it take getting personal? Yeah. Lowest, lowest cost of doing business, best ROI in the business is still sphere of influence. So I want to encourage you guys to focus on that. So here's a fun one. 63%, another statistic you want to write down. 63% of home sellers, when surveyed and said, where did you find your listing agent? They said, I knew them. Novel, right? And I'm thinking 63%. Wow, that's a pretty good number. And boy, that leaves a lot of room for improvement. That means there's 37% of people out there that just used whomever, why ever. Right? So what I want you guys to do is I want to encourage you guys to get back to working your sphere of influence. I want you to get back communicating with people. I want you guys telling the story of what's going on now. Because the media is just going to start this up next week. You know the song? Starts goes like this. Bubble, 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 bubble. That's the song they're going to do next week and the week after that and the week after that. Guys, when you are sitting at a sub two month supply of homes nationally, there's no such thing as a bubble. Are some markets going up a little bit? Sure. Are some markets going down a little bit? Sure. I stood in Indianapolis three weeks ago and I looked at them. I said, do you know what your supply of homes is here within five miles of Fishers where we were? And they're like, four months, seven months, seven, 1.7 month supply of homes. Are they going to have a bubble? Are house prices going to keep going up there? Is now a good time to invest in that market? Is now a good time to buy a home in that market? Yeah. See, I can talk with a sense of authority and conviction and confidence. And when you talk with confidence and conviction, people want to come to you. Okay, so here's the fun part, guys. Next. This is all about relationships. Let's delineate this out real quick. First things first, is I want you to think add value. Every interaction you have is add value. Think about this like a relationship. I've been married almost 30 years. In uh, August 6th, I will be married 30 years. I know. I got married at four. 30 years married. One of the things that I learned a long time ago is that I cannot possibly treat my wife better than she treats me. I try and I lose. And if I approach this relationship with how can I add value and how can I give, not get, the relationship keeps getting better and better and better and better and better. Pour into the people around you, add value. You'll get after you give. Build credibility. Guys, did that sound pretty credible? Like I kind of know a little bit about what I'm talking about. Don't tell anybody. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't even know how I got the VP position. They put me in charge. 
you, you know this information and you drop some of this information out when it's needed and people start to see you as credible. As you add credibility, people are going to want to do business with you. As you add credibility, people are going to drag people to do business with you. Guys, there's been a number of people I've dragged to Club Wealth because I know you guys can take care of them and help them transition your business. I've recommended you a bunch of times because I know you get the job done because you have the credibility. Okay. Give, not get. Become their expert. Did it sound like expert talking earlier? Yeah. So learn some of that, right? Next thing is leverage the slow time to become an expert. If you've got a little bit of slow time right now, start studying this stuff. Find these little parts and pieces so you know what's going on. And then consistency is the key. Doing the same thing over and over and over that works will get you business. It keeps going and going and going and going. Okay. So here's a fun one. Three recipes. I'm going to burn through these. Market update. Everybody should be doing a market update every single month that tells people what's going on in the market. Would you guys like to know exactly how to do that? If I could show you a video on exactly how to do that, would you like to see how I tell you to do that? Okay, good. You can't get it. Contractor list. How many of you guys have a preferred contractor list? Did you know the average American's moving every 10 years, which means that they need you one time every 10 years unless they're referring business to you, but they have four things every year that break on their house. You guys have heard of Grant Cardone? He talks about 10X. Yeah, this is 40X. They got four things break every year on a house and you're their resource for connection. You got 40 times more contact with your buyers and sellers. Does that give you a better advantage when it's time to sell and buy a house? Who do you think they're going to call? So building out a contractor's list is huge. Would you guys like to see a video on how to do that? Would you like to see my list with 93 different types of contractors and people that touch houses and how to leverage that into 360 people you can add to your sphere? And if you half donkey that, you only get 5% return on that. 18 more sales just by having a contractor list. How many of you guys want to see that recipe? I've got that for you too. Okay. Social media done right. Let's stop doing, look at me. I'm a realtor. Look at me with my giant key. I just saw the house. For those of you who are VIP, they talk about that bird crapping on the mayor. You're like, I want to throw up on the mayor. Social media done right. Guys, listen, uh, the, the public thing, the public, 3% of people in the public think salespeople are trustworthy. So let's stop acting like salespeople and let's start acting like market experts and market experts that are teaching, training, coaching, and loving people to success and showing them how to do social correctly, which is here's something for you, you not something for me. Let me promote other people's business. Would you guys like to see a recipe on that in detail in a video? Okay, I'll, I'll include that. Okay, scan this. Mike, I asked somebody if I could use this. You said you could send this out later. Okay, good. I, I want to make sure you knew that. Kind of click, quack. <laughs> ha ha. Hit this, scan this, guys. There's eight modules. They are free. I don't care if you're a coach. It's bootleg stuff. It's not super highly developed. It's not super overproduced. It's literally a buddy of mine's like, dude, can you just throw these three recipes in a system that makes sense? Take this, run with it, use it, love it, share it, spread it around. You guys will jump in there. I'll approve you. There's no cost, no charge. There's no upsell. Mike, I don't sell anything on there. Okay? So... It's not scan. Okay. That's okay. So for some reason the computer doesn't like that one. That's the thing. By the way, see me afterwards and I'll give you the QR code. You can jump in there and go from there. Guys, in the next session I'm doing, breakout session, I'm going to show you the way and a couple of the recipes that I use to hire 2,079 agents in 15 months with a 5.8 per person productivity. If you guys want to see how we do that and the shifts that we made to make that happen in my last role, that's what I'm doing in a breakout session on traction. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Give it up. Yeah. Bro, Good? seriously. Thank you. I, I'm allowed back once or twice. Guys, freaking <laughs> vice president of EXP, guys. Give it up for Russ. Come on.